Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday Night Nightcap. I haven't spent a great lot of time in the shop uh, the last week, but I'll be spending a lot of time in the shop this week because Debs will be on holiday to Portugal. Um, just probably watching this. If you are, I hope you're enjoying yourself. But anyway, back to tonight's nightcap. I uh, do some more work on the boiler clack valves off the central steam wagon. I show quite a bit of that, uh, some machining, a little bit of welding, some plasma cutting and some pressure testing. That's enough talk, let's get on and uh, see what we can get up to. These are the two valve spindles. Um, they're definitely made of brass and not bronze and that isn't the way a sentinel would have left something. So I'm going to make two new ones. I've got a bit of 316 stainless there. I'm going to make them out of that. I've measured the thread here and that's three quarter width worth. I can screw cut it. I've also got a die. I think I'll try the die first because I've got to change all the chains you to screw cut it. So I turn that down to three quarter, put some threads on it, and the crucial bit is going to be putting these angles on, 45 degree angles on the end of the valves. But the first thing to do is knock this down to three quarter and see if we're putting some threads on them. It's only with machine stainless, it's hard to get the chips to break. You get these horrible, nasty, stringy bastard things. This is the last pass, this takes it down to dead on three quarter. Look at them horrible bastard chips. I hate them. Look at it. I need to invest in some tips that will break stainless steel chips. Dangerous stuff, though. So that's the threaded part, I need to put a recess in, that bit down there, so we'll have a measure of that. I'm just using this part and blade to rough this out. Break that inner edge in there. So actually, throw a pair of balls and decide to power feed it in. So it appears to have cut a nice sharp thread. That's good. You don't want threads tight on steam engines because things start to expand and bind up. That's absolutely splendid. That was a square the machine on the end of there. The next thing is to put the valve faces on, which I'm sure are at 45 degrees. Those two there.
is square and that handle measures at 16 mil and that's 19 three quarter so if I take three mil off which is 1.5 mil off each side it should be a reasonable fit in there I'm going to use a collar block to, to do that with square collar block in our 40 collar block and this will go through from the back and leave enough poking out for me to do what I need to do I'm going to cut on the side so I can do that side, come across do that side and then turn it 180 and do the other two at least that's me that's me plan First thing to do is to touch it off and then put some zeros in. Right. Zero there. That's actually the plain well in there. Set zero. valve spindles have worked out quite nicely that's the position it's normally in that's where the valve open that gets screwed into there and there's a valve seat in the bottom so when that's in there like that that can be turned down and that hits that seat and that blanks off this valve completely so you've got boiler steam pressure on this side that port there and that's the valve that stops it from allowing any steam or water out it's like an emergency valve if something goes wrong with this pipe work or this clack valve you can turn that like that and that shuts off it's a dead stop but normally it's left wide open like that and that's why it has to seat seal on that seat there i've been talking to one or two people and i've problems myself with stainless steel having a different rate of expansion to the bronze it could possibly lead to the valve bending up. Originally these would have been made out of bronze. Uh, the ones I took out were actually brass, soft brass. Now I have got some PB1 bronze here. So I've decided to remake them out of bronze. Uh, just as the Victorians did it. So I'm going to put it back to standard. Make the valves, spindles out of bronze. I'm using a collet to machine these for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is I can get in better with the camera for different shots. And the other reason is it gets a much, much stronger hold than a 193 jaw chuck. Make sure I've got enough material out. So the first thing, square the end up. Knock it down to three quarter, 19 mil, put the threads on, machine the first part of the seat, then turn it over, machine that part, exactly as we did with the stainless steel ones, but this time it's out of bronze.
can cut bronze dry but a little bit of this certainly won't do any harm Straight here is three quarter weight worth it's a reasonably new die it's a new old die but it's a new one new stock a old stock ah oh, new old stock isn't it yeah right. Throw that there, that's our machine work and that's what's chuck and see if damaging the threads and get the grip it on there nicely. the same collet and this collet block to put the square on I've already set things up because I have already made a bronze, a bronze spindle before this is the second one so I know that one cut on each flat is going to get it to the size I want it so that goes up against that stop normally these collet Holders would lock off on the back of there, but this one doesn't because the thread's actually bigger than the square. It's a design fault on them. Right, everything's set up. I've also got a stop on the bed, so we'll set things in motion. Just 
taking about 1.6, 1.7 mil off and stop there because I've got to stop sit on the bed don't try and put your hands in when it's running it's not worth it if you get your fingers in that little cutter you can just take them clean off you know ifs or buts about it